اور ہم پوری دنیا کو یہ بتا دینا چاہتے ہیں کہ کسی کا ہو رہے کوئی نبی کے ہو رہے گے ہم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ علی محمد علی آلہ وصحبہ وسلم in the name of Allah the most beneficent the most merciful I testify that there is no true God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad is Allah's true slave and messenger may Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam be upon the noble prophet and the believers of his family and the noble companions and those who follow on their path until the day of resurrection and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from them we continue the explanation of Umdat al-Ahkam and we have reached the Hadith number 12, Hadith number 12, and this will be um, class number 11. This will be class number 11, Hadith number 12. And, Abi, and this is the uh, night of the 24th of Jamada al-Akhir of 1426 after Hijra, corresponding to the night of the 30th of July, the year 2005. عن أبي أيوب الأنصاري رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا أتيتم الغائط فلا تستقبل القبلة بغائط ولا بول ولا تستدبرها ولكن شرقوا أو غربوا قال أبو أيوب فقدمنا الشام فوجدنا مراحيض قد بنيت نحو الكعبة فَنَنْحَرِفُ عَنْهَا وَنَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ In this hadith, which is uh, narrated by uh, Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, when you come to the place where in you respond to the call of nature, then neither face nor turn your back to the Qibla while defecating or urinating but face either east or west but face either east or west and Abu Ayyub added فَقَدِمْنَا sham so when we arrived in sham Asham, the geographical boundaries of Asham is as follows. It extends between the Ephrates River in Iraq, east, to the Sinai Peninsula, west. to the Sina Peninsula west and from the north of the Arabian Peninsula to the coastal area of the Mediterranean north and south this constitutes Bilad al-Sham al-Sham area and therefore in it nowadays are the following countries Syria, Lebanon, Jordan and Palestine this constitutes a sham so Abu Ayyub said فَقَدِمْنَا sham meaning after it was opened and it fell under the reign of Islam فَوَجَدْنَا marahid. so we came and we found lavatories lavatories built facing the Kaaba built facing in the direction of the Kaaba فَنَنْحَرِفُ عَنْهَا therefore we turned ourselves while using them وَنَسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ and then asked Allah for forgiveness and asked for Allah's forgiveness now the subject of this hadith the subject of this hadith This hadith revolves on the subject of ruling concerning directing oneself in the Qibla, direction facing the Qibla or turning one's back to the Qibla while 
responding to the call of nature, either by defecating or urinating. This is the subject of this hadith. The narrator is Abu Ayyub, Khalid bin Zayd al-Ansari. May Allah be pleased with him. Abu Ayyub, Khalid bin Zayd al-Ansari al-Najari. May Allah be pleased with him. He witnessed the Aqaba allegiance. And the Prophet والسلام, when he came to Medina, he was his host. Until he, the Prophet وسلم, built the masjid and his houses, the apartments for his wives. And he witnessed, Abu Ayyub witnessed the battle of Badr and the battles afterwards. And continued from one battle to the other until he died in Constantinople in the year 52 after Hijrah in the year 52 after Hijrah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him in this hadith some explanation of some wording We passed on the Prophet's statement, alayhi salatu wasalam, when he said, وَلَكِنْ شَرِّقُوا وَغَرِّبُوا But face either east or west. This is relevant to the people in Medina. This is relevant to the people in Medina. Because the Qibla in Mecca will be south to them. So the Prophet ﷺ directed them to face east or west. And in this case, the Qibla will be either to their right or to their left. The Qibla in this case will be either to their right or to their left. Now, the overall explanation of the Hadith. al Kaaba. is venerated because it is the house of Allah Azza wa Jal and therefore it has a high ranking and status in the hearts of the believers and a high ranking in Islam and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obligated the Muslims to direct themselves in its direction while in the state of Salah where Salah is the bridge between them and Allah Azza wa Jal and he glorified and magnified it so as not to be their Qibla while in a state of defecating or urinating or that it be to their backs all of this is because of magnification and respect and here is Abu Ayyub al-Ansari may Allah be pleased with him reports from the Prophet والسلام, that he the messenger وسلم, forbade the ummah to direct itself or to turn their backs to the Qibla while responding to the call of nature. So, and then in this, there is the direction of the Prophet ﷺ to the people of Medina as to what they should do while they respond to the call of nature, that they should turn east or west so that the Qibla is either to their right or to their left and Abu Ayyub tells that when they came to Asham after it was opened and they found the these places the lavatories built before the Sham was a, an Islamic state 
or under Islam, while they were built in a way facing the Qibla. So the companions turned themselves away from facing the Qibla while asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. It is possible also that they may have may have not acted to change the direction of these lavatories and so they asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness for not doing that or it is possible that the way they turned away turned themselves away from the direction of Qibla was not sufficient And that's why they sought Allah's forgiveness for that. Either one is a possibility. The benefits of this hadith, number one. Forbidden to turn one face in the direction of Qibla or turn one back in its direction while responding to the call of nature, either in defecating or in urinating. And this forbidden is the opinion of the majority of the scholars. And the scholars, rahimahumullah, differ as to the ruling concerning this matter. A group of scholars went to the opinion, number one, that the forbidden is absolute because of the generality of this hadith and other hadiths as well. Meaning it is forbidden absolutely to face or to turn oneself turns oneself back. Another group of and from those who went to this opinion is Shaykh al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah and Ibn Ibn Qayyim. The second opinion another group of scholars considered it absolutely permissible. And they relied on some hadith, and from them is the hadith of Ibn Umar, which will come in the next explanation, hadith number 13. And some of the scholars went into details, forbidding this act in the open space, and permitting it inside buildings. and the like and this is this third opinion is the preponderating opinion in which all the evidences come to converge as we shall see from the hadith of Ibn Umar where it indicates the permissibility to turn one's back in the direction of the Qibla inside building structures. So therefore this hadith of Abi Ayyub is particularized by the hadith of Ibn Umar where in the hadith of Ibn Umar he said once I went upstairs in Hafsa's house and saw the Prophet ﷺ answering the call of nature with his back towards the Kaaba and facing Asham the third benefit the third benefit is magnification of the Kaaba and its respect because the reason behind the forbidden is due to the magnification of the house of Allah Azza wa Jal. The fourth benefit the 
the good way of teaching of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. This is evident when he mentioned the forbiddance he directed to that which is permissible. Fifth benefit, there is nothing legally disliked in directing oneself towards the sun or the moon while in a state of defecation or urination. Sixth benefit, the slight inclination or the slight turning away from the direction of the Qibla is not sufficient because the Prophet ﷺ said turn east or west seventh benefit the permissibility of facing the Qibla and turning one's back to it while doing the istinja' or istijmar while washing the private parts with water or with stones and the like respectively because the prohibition is restricted for the state of responding to the call of nature in defecation and or urination. Eighth benefit. Anyone who indulges in something blameworthy, then he should resort to istighfar. Istighfar. Asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness. Now, facing the Kaaba. Facing the Kaaba. Sometimes it is wajib facing the Kaaba. Sometimes it is, number one, wajib, an obligation. Like in Salah. Like in Salah. Let's repeat this. Facing the Kaaba. Facing the Kaaba. Has several angles to it. Number one, it could be wajib, an obligation. As in Salah. As in Salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated in Surah Al-Baqarah 2, 144 فَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ وَحَيْثُ مَا كُنْتُمْ فَوَلُّوا وُجُوهَكُمْ شَطْرَةِ Verily we have seen the turning of your Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم face towards the heaven surely we shall turn you to a qibla that shall please you so turn your face in the direction of the Masjid Al-Haram and whoever or wheresoever you people are, turn your faces in the direction. Second, facing the Qibla could be forbidden. As it is in the case of responding to the call of nature. This is the second angle. The third angle that facing the Kaaba could be disliked. The second is, it is forbidden, like in the state of urination and or defecation. So first, it could be wajib. Second, it is forbidden. Third, it is makruh, disliked. Like, for example, if the Imam giving the khutbah, the sermon, faces the Kaaba, 
while doing the sermon. This is disliked. Fourth, it is a sunnah. Example, when the imam finishes from the salah, he stays facing the qibla until he finishes the remembrance. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam tabarakta ya dhal jalali wal ikram. O oh Allah, you are a salam. And salam, peace is from you. Blessed, O you, the one of magnificence and nobility. Then the Imam turns his face in the direction of the ma'mumin, the people led in salah. These are the four angles related to the rulings of facing the Qibla. Now we move to Hadith number 13 in the same book, and this is the Hadith of Abdullah bin Umar. عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما قال رقيت يوما على بيت حفصة فرأيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقضي حاجته مستقبل الشام مستدبر الكعبة وفي رواية مستقبلا بيت المقدس in this hadith, narrated by Abdullah bin Umar, he said, once I went upstairs in Hafsa's house and saw the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam answering, I saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam answering the call of nature with his back towards the Kaaba and facing Asham and facing Asham and in one narration, facing Baytul Maqdis, meaning Al Masjid Al Aqsa, the purified house or mosque. The subject of this hadith is the ruling regarding turning one's back towards the Kaaba while responding to the call of nature. This is the subject. The narrator, Abdullah bin Umar, meaning the son of Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah be pleased with them both, He accepted Islam with his father, Umar, and he migrated to Medina. He did not attend the battle of Badr and Uhud because he was young. The Prophet ﷺ testified for his uprightness, and his associates testified for his Excellence. Imam Malik rahimahullah said that Ibn Umar lived after the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam 60 years. People coming to him, delegates coming to him seeking knowledge. And he sallallahi radiallahu ta'ala anhu He, may Allah be pleased with him, was keen and cautious in his fatawa and also regarding whatever he does by himself. He died in Mecca in the year 73 after Hijrah. 
may Allah be pleased with him and his father. Hafsa mentioned in the hadith Hafsa the daughter of Umar Abdullah's sister the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married her in the third year after Hijra in the third year after Hijra Hafsa Hafsa the daughter of Umar the sister of Abdullah bin Umar the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam married her in the third year after Hijra after the death of her husband who was wounded in the battle of Uhud so she is one of the mothers of the believers may Allah be pleased with them all and she was a woman of opinion and excellence Umar may Allah be pleased with him designated her as a caretaker of his endowment in the land in Khaybar the endowment which Umar had the waqf in Khaybar and which was the first endowment in Islam she may Allah be pleased with her died in Jamad al-Ula the year 41 after Hijra may Allah be pleased with her her father and her brother the overall explanation of this hadith in this hadith Abdullah bin Umar informs that he went upstairs one day on the house of his sister Hafsa, the mother of the believers, and saw the Prophet ﷺ while responding to the call of nature, facing Baytul Maqdis and turning his back towards the the Kaaba. Ibn Umar said this refuting those who said that the Prophet ﷺ does not face the Baytul Maqdis, the Masjid in Al-Quds while in the state of urination and ordification. The benefits of this hadith. The permissibility to take the upstairs of a relative's house and the like if one is not prevented from doing so and if he knows that his relatives are not, don't mind this being done, but if he knows otherwise that they are not quite happy or pleased with that then it is not allowed to do so and if there are situations where there is no prevention still however in origin it is not allowed unless traditionally it is unless traditionally it is in a certain community it is acceptable then in this case it is the second benefit permissibility to turn one's back in the direction of the Qibla while responding to the call of nature within structure boundaries in a building or the like third benefit permissibility 
to turn one face in the direction of Baytul Maqdis while responding to the call of nature. Now you have heard the hadith of Abi Ayyub and the hadith of Abdullah bin Umar. In the hadith of Abi Ayyub, there is prohibition from facing the Qibla and turning one's back to it in the state of defecation and or urination that this in the hadith of Abi Ayyub is general on the apparent meaning in the open space and within structures and in this hadith of Abdullah bin Umar it tells that it is permissible within the structure boundaries and therefore the hadith of Abdullah bin Umar will be a particularization of the generalization in hadith of Abi Ayyub This is the preponderating opinion which our Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al-Uthaymeen rahimahullah took as well as other great uh, scholars of Islam went to this distinction between the open space and the restricted structures. Some of the scholars are with the opinion that since there is this ikhtilaf, therefore one should even in the state of boundaries in a house or in a building one should turn away from directing oneself directing one's back to the qibla while in the state of urination and or defecation because of the difference of opinions amongst the great scholars regarding this matter and so as to be on the precautionary side. Now, questions on the hadith, hadith 12 and hadith 13. Questions on hadith 12. Question number one. If there are people whose location is similar to the location of the Medina, what should they do in terms of directing themselves while in the state of urination, in the state of defecation and or urination. If in a certain location people are geographically in a similar situation like the people of Medina, what should they do in terms of directing themselves while responding to the call of nature? Second question, what is the topic of the hadith of Abi Ayyub? What is the topic of the hadith of Abi Ayyub? Now, questions on hadith of Abdullah bin Umar. First, correct the following statements. Safiya, may Allah be pleased with her, died in the year 43 after Hijrah. Safiya, may Allah be pleased with her, died in the year 43 after Hijrah. Second, it's not permissible to face Bayt al-Maqdis while responding to the call of nature. It is not permissible to face Bayt al-Maqdis while responding to the call of nature. Second, it's not permissible to face Bayt al-Maqdis while responding to the call of nature. Third, third, Asham is to the east of Medina. Asham, third question. Asham is to the east of Medina. These are the questions related to hadith of Abdullah bin Umar. 
May Allah be pleased with him and his father and his sister. Walhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Ma akhiru davana anilhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen.